Right then guys, how's it going and welcome back to a new stadium tour. Today we are outside of the brand new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the new Spurs Stadium. I'm going in there on a stadium tour and as always, I'm taking you guys with me. Now I've done a few on the channel now, so make sure to check them out, but I have never been in here before. I cannot wait to go in. So let's get going. Yes guys, welcome to the brand new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. As always, before heading inside, I did take a look around the ground and you can just see here, after literally stepping off the bus, how big the stadium looks. The front of the stadium has TV screens and photos of the Tottenham Hotspur players along with the club shop which we will be going in shortly to start our tour but we'll take a quick walk around the stadium first. Round the back is the Lily White House which is home to the technical college and admin offices for Spurs. That strange thing in the sky is a bridge linking over to the stadium. And this is my favourite shot that I got from outside the stadium, from left to right. It looks fantastic, the amount of glass used I think makes it look so futuristic. Heading back to the front of the stadium, the imprint of the cockerel is everywhere along with welcome signs in loads of different languages. You can also see some stairs that lead right up to the front of the stadium which were closed on the day. But it is now time to head back into the club shop and get started on our stadium tour. I collected my tour pass before getting a chance to look around the club shop which I'm told is the largest club shop in Europe. They did have some pretty cool things including signed footballs and signed Spurs shirts before sitting down in front of this humongous screen and getting introduced to our tour guides. My name's Keith by the way. My name's Keith. I'll be uh, on the tour with Nathan. Nathan and I will be with you on the tour. Keith let us know that where we are currently sat is actually where the entrance would have been to the old White Hart Lane and then they played a video showing loads of fantastic goals and moments through Spurs' history. Then it was time to get started on the tour and we made our way into the giant glass reception we were able to see from the outside and I'm told has the largest reception screen in the world. Also in there was a time capsule which was built into the floor and isn't to be opened for another 50 years. It has a few pieces of Tottenham Hotspur history in there and also some predictions from the players of what will happen over the next 50 years. We then made our way upstairs so we could check out one of the corporate suites. Welcome to the Lodge, and that is not Lodge spelt incorrectly, it basically means small box. And unlike a small box, the Lodge has a lot more room, a lot more seats, and the Spurs Stadium has a fair few of these as it allows them to get in as many corporate guests or hospitality guests into the stadium as possible. And as you can imagine, it looks pretty good. Uh, but obviously, that means it's not very cheap. It is a minimum of four tickets per season to sit in here at £10,000 each, with a maximum of ten tickets at a hundred grand. Harry Winks actually has a table in here for his family and friends, and as you can see, you get a pretty good view of the stadium and pitch as well. Something that's pretty cool in here is that all the TV screens are actually double-sided, so no matter where you sit, you will get a view of the telly. Next up, it was time to head out into the stands, and as I've mentioned, the tickets up here are not cheap, so you do get a fantastic view of the pitch from up here. And again, the seats are padded for comfort, and they're also heated. So I was kept lovely and warm while we were sitting up here. We were given some time to sit and really take in the full surroundings of this just over 62,000 capacity stadium. You'll notice they have giant screens in every corner of the stadium, two of which are the size of tennis courts. And you'll also notice the glass tiles that run along the edge of the roof, which are there to keep as much sound in as possible on a match day to make the atmosphere as loud as possible. 
To my right we have the south stand and as you can see it is very steep, it's actually the largest single tier stand in the UK and the reason it's so steep is how close the stands are to the pitch. They want to have the highest capacity possible in the ground but still keeping the fans as close to the action as possible. Above the south stand we have the Golden Cockerel, now this is not the original from White Hart Lane, that is actually now over in Lily House, but this is an enlarged identical replica, which means it has all of the scrapes and dints that the old one had, including the dints caused by Paul Gascoigne Gaza when he tried to shoot pigeons down from the roof of the stadium with an air rifle, and the only bird he shot was the golden cockerel. One final bit of information before we head back inside and that is that below the football pitch is an American football NFL pitch. The football pitch can actually slide all the way under the south stand in just 30 minutes and unveil an American football astroturf pitch. So they have the option of both at all times whenever it's needed. We made our way back inside through the lodge before heading down in the lift and we got ourselves started on a little bit of a player's walk as this staircase here is where the majority of players would enter the stadium on a match day before heading into this player's entrance. So this is where you'd spot the majority of players making their way through with their headphones on and boot bags in hand before making their way to the changing room and to start off we are heading into the away changing room. So despite having a brand new, very expensive stadium, the away changing room is pretty standard. I mean, it is a very good size to fit in the full away team squad along with the coaches, but in terms of comfort, there really isn't any, but that's exactly what they want for the away team changing room. I mean, even the color scheme is very standard of blue and white. I mean, they do have a TV screen on the wall for tactics, which is probably more than you get from most away changing rooms. There's a kit bin in the middle of the room. Uh, but then as for the players themselves, they have a very simple metal peg to put a coat on, along with a wooden shelf just above, and then a wooden bench to sit on. We made our way out of the away changing room, back across the player's entrance and into the home changing room corridor. Now in here you can already start to see some of the Spurs photos of goals and moments across the years and before heading into the changing room itself we took a quick look at their warm-up area. They have their own indoor warm-up area. The walls are actually reinforced so they can kick around a football in here if they wanted to and can typically spend about half an hour in here before they even go out and see the pitch. And now it is finally time to head into the home changing room and straight away you can spot the difference between the two changing rooms this one obviously has all of the Spurs shirts hung around the room on the wall we have a giant touchscreen TV with the golden cockerel printed above and you can see that every player has their own compartment with their shirt hung up and name printed above as well they all also have a lovely comfy seat to sit on and a small compartment just below for a pair of boots or trainers. Now the floor in here is non-slip so they can wear boots without worrying about falling over and you'll also notice the room is in a horseshoe shape so everyone is facing and focused on the TV for tactics or the manager at the front doing a team talk. You might have spotted these strange looking things hanging from the ceiling and they are microphones and cameras which are being used to record the new Spurs Amazon Prime series and something I'm sure you will have spotted is the strange neon light coming from around the bottom of the room. Now it looks pretty but it's also a vent which pumps in fresh air from the pitch into the changing room on a match day so whether it's hot or cold the players can actually acclimatize before they even head outside and when the grass has been cut they're actually able to smell it as well. 
In the next room there is a plunge pool for an ice bath after the game and there is a TV on the wall. In the old White Hart Lane there was no TV and players used to fall over running out to see any goals or highlights. So now they don't have to move. I grabbed myself a photo with the Harry Kane shirt before heading out back down the corridor and into the Tunnel Club. As you might guess, the Tunnel Club is a bar slash restaurant right next to the Players Tunnel. So anyone sat in here is able to see both teams lining up before they head out onto the pitch. Now the players can see back through but it is tinted and you will mainly find directors or player legends sitting in here. Although anyone can, it's 30 grand to join with 19 grand a season for two tickets for a minimum of three seasons. So it's expensive. But you do also get a very nice seat behind the dugout as well. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Our chance to head out through the Spurs Tunnel. With golden cockerels on either side heading out underneath the come on you Spurs sign. And I've got to say every time I do a stadium tour this is always the best bit. Stepping out into that brand new stadium. You feel tiny. The stadium is humongous, over 62,000 capacity, and I felt fantastic. I can't even begin to imagine how the players must feel stepping out onto that pitch with the home fans cheering them on. Even on that day, the smell of the freshly cut grass was fantastic as well. It was, it was truly incredible, and as I say, I cannot imagine how the players must feel doing that on a match day. I grabbed myself a seat in the manager's chair to find out what the view is like from the dugout and I can tell you that the seats are heated, which must be nice for the players. And just before we head back inside, I mentioned earlier on how the stadium is built to keep the sound in and we gave that a quick test. Go! That echo is just from the 15 to 20 people cheering on that day. Imagine what it must be like when a goal goes in in an actual game. Heading back inside we get a nice reverse view of the players tunnel to see where the home and visiting teams will come out from their changing rooms before turning right down the corridor which is where they have 10 interview rooms. Now it's actually a requirement that if you would like to host a Champions League final you need to have 10 interview rooms. So maybe one day it could happen here and I got myself a quick interview cheering for my winning goal. We got to take a peek inside one of the two American football changing rooms they have here and they have actually signed a deal with the NFL to host two games a year for the next 10 years at the Spurs Stadium. And as you can see, the changing room is massive. They can have as many as 75 to 80 people in the changing room on a game day. Every player with their own personal space. And again, they have reinforced chairs. Some of these players from the NFL can be pretty big. So they all have their own heavy duty chair to sit on. And for our final stop, we are heading into the press room. Now there is 132 very nice leather seats in here for all the journalists and reporters and they hold all of their post-match conferences in here. Anything like signings is now done over at the training ground, but for Champions League, they still do their pre-match conferences in here as well. And this room is multifunctional. They do actually offer it out for corporate events and has the capability of becoming a cinema. So if you did ever want that, it is available for you. And I did get a few pictures sat up behind the desk myself as well. One final bit of information, as we know, White Hart Lane was demolished to make way for the brand new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And this flooring we can see here, this whole corridor, is actually made from chippings taken from White Hart Lane when it was demolished, which you know, I think it's fantastic. It's a great way to hold on to a little bit of something from the old stadium, as they have done throughout the ground that we've seen on this tour.
And that is it guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Keith and Nathan, the tour guides, they were fantastic, and I've got to say, you know, if you are ever in the area, or you are ever tempted to get a stadium tour of the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, I'd 100% recommend it, I'm glad I signed up, I'm glad I went down there, I had a brilliant time. Right then guys, so that is it. That was the inside of the new Spurs Stadium. It was amazing. It was really, really good. I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Uh, brand new, fantastic facilities. Yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video as well. Drop a like if you have and be sure to check out my other stadium tours on the channel if you haven't already. Obviously, subscribe if you are new. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.